Hello there everybody, Sam Strange here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another video. Now today I'm going to be addressing a question that I get in the comments quite a lot. Oh, it's not necessarily a question, more of a complaint I suppose, I don't know. Either way, I do get a lot of comments saying that certain people have got rolling stock which just refuses to stay on the track on point work and things. Uh, problems with rolling stock derailing on points basically. And when I see those comments I always think yes, I know exactly your problem because, uh, well I don't know if you've seen a lot of my videos, you will know that that does happen to me quite a lot. So yeah, maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm not the right person to be giving tips on this subject. However, I think it is kind of part and parcel of having a model railway. There are going to be some issues at some point, aren't there? Um, no matter how careful you are, no matter how good your track is, no matter how good your rolling stock is, I think there are going to be one or two issues. However, I think there are steps you can take to improve things and to improve your rolling stock and to improve your track design, I suppose, to make sure that the number of derailments, particularly on points, is kept to a minimum. Now I do have one or two pieces of rolling stock which just don't seem to behave on the points no matter what I do to them and I won't mention any particular piece of rolling stock in particular but there do seem to be certain types of rolling stock which don't like points for whatever reason. So let's start then by having a quick look at some actual points and see what's going on with those and see if there's anything that can be done with the actual track design. All right, so here is one of my points on the layout, and this is what I would call a bad point. You can probably see that there are a number of issues with this. So first of all, one that I can't do much about is the fact that it is mounted on the carpet, which is of course not ideal, and most people recommend not to run a layout on the carpet at all. I do that because uh, I know people enjoy to see it, um, and if you want to do that as well, then that's okay, but bear in mind that it isn't ideal. Normally, when you're installing points, they need to be secure. Obviously, this isn't particularly secure, as you can see, and they also need to be flat, spirit level flat and of course the best way to do that is to use a baseboard and whatnot. However there are other issues with the way this is mounted and I've found that if you install a curve such as this one straight after a point uh, then that seems to cause more derailments than normal. Now this isn't too bad because there's no curve at the start and no curve after but as you can see we're having to curve well to the right and then to the left straight away and certain coaches don't really like that. Let's try and demonstrate. As you can see, <laughs> that worked marvellously well. I was expecting to have to do that a couple of times. But as you can see, without fail, this LNER coach here derails on that point. Uh, now, obviously, you can't necessarily plan your track so that there are no curves attached to points because in real life it doesn't work like that. However, if there's a choice, I would always recommend having straights coming off your points. And uh, let's go and try that now, shall we? Let me show you one of the points that does have a straight, straight after the curve. So here's another one of my points near the sidings, and I would consider this to be a slightly better point. Now, there is still a curve mounted onto this one, but as you can see, it's on the sort of straight road. So any rolling stock that goes over that will be going straight. So hopefully they won't derail. And as you saw, that was okay. But uh, if we put a piece of rolling stock so that the point is changing that piece of rolling stock onto the other line, you can see there is just a straight after that. Now, I'm sure if we try again with this coach, it's still going to have issues. Although, no, it actually did get over it that time. Let's see if it'll come back. Uh, so yeah, you can see already what a difference that has made. But I do think there are some changes we could make to the coach itself to try and improve it on the point work. So I'm going to talk a little bit about this. It might get a bit lengthy, but hopefully you'll find it interesting. And I'll show you a few tools and a few tips that I like to use. Okay, so this section is going to be a bit of a troubleshooting session to see if we can't improve this LNER coach. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through the steps that I would usually take when I'm investigating a piece of naughty rolling stock like this. However, what I'm about to do might not be all-encompassing, so if there's something, there's a technique, for example, that you do, or there's an idea that you have uh, that I don't mention or I forgot about, do let me know down in the comment section, and if there are some interesting theories or ideas, I might do a part two where I try those or uh, maybe experiment to see if they work. So the first things first, the easiest I like to start with, uh, obviously it stands to reason you want to do the easy things first in case that's the problem, and that is the wheels. Now I don't know if you can see this, but the wheels are getting to the point on this where they're very crusty indeed, and in fact there's so much dirt on those, I wonder whether that is going to be affecting the performance. So even though it probably isn't going to be this, you might as well just clean the wheels and see. So what you do is um, I'm sure you know how to clean wheels, so I won't spend too long on this, but uh, we're going to do everything possible to try and make this LNER coach behave, because as you probably can tell, I'm a bit bitter towards it as well, because it just doesn't behave. So inside here, I do have some IPA. You can buy IPA very cheaply on eBay, 
and uh, these days that's what I use rather than nail polish remover. It's a little bit safer and it seems to work really, really well. And if you want to know more about cleaning fluids and which one's best, uh, check up there. There we go. Uh, I'll put the cleaning fluids experimental video that I uh, that I did some, uh, some months ago up and you can take a look. But uh, yes, during my limited experiments for that, I discovered that IPA was actually the best on balance. It's, I think it's the cheapest. It seems to work no worse than more expensive options. And uh, of course, it's not going to uh, damage your lungs too much. Although, of course, whatever cleaning fluid you use, you're going to want to do it in a well-ventilated environment, shall we say. Okay, so I'm almost there. Let's do one more dip. Shouldn't really be dipping a dirty cotton bud back into the bottle, but we'll do it just to speed things along. So there we go. And I'm not going to test this after every step. I'm just going to do everything and see if it uh, see if it works at the end. So there we go, and you can just see what a lot of mess is on that cotton bud there. Look at that. So yes, that may or may not make a difference. Of course, uh, if they're just slightly dirty, it's probably not going to make a difference. But if they're caked, if they're caked in dirt like mine was, uh, then it might be. So it's worth trying that. So the next thing is gauging. Now, particularly with wheels like this, gauging can be an issue straight out of the factory. With the older style of rolling stock where the wheels are fixed uh, onto the axle, then it's not going to be an issue. But what I would suggest getting is one of these. This is a back-to-back -back gauge, and it cost me six or seven pounds. Uh, it's a little bit expensive, but you'll only ever need one. Uh, I bought this on eBay, so uh, if I can find one, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, if not, just search back-to-back -back, uh, gauge on eBay, and you can find one. Now, what you do is you just bung it in between the wheels like this, and you see if they are gauged correctly. And as you can see, the gauge does sort of go in between these wheels here. Um, if not, I'll show you what to do. I'll just find out whether any of these aren't. Uh, this one's a little bit rough. So what you do is you carefully take the wheel, uh, or the axle rather, out of the piece of rolling stock. It's not a nice job this, because you have to be rough. It's even worse getting them back in after you've gauged them, because uh, they tend to slide around on the axle if you're not careful. So there we go. So what you'd normally do is, I mean, a lot of the time when they come from Hornby, they're not... Uh, they're too tight, the wheels, to fit around the gauge. But as you can see, these fit quite nicely. So if they do fit, you just squeeze the wheels in like that. There we go, and that is now gauged correctly. It's also worth making sure, if this is in focus, it's also worth making sure that the, uh, the, the wheels are on the centre of the axle rather than to the left or to the right. So that's that. Uh, let's try and put these back onto the, uh, the model now, shall we? And uh, I will briefly check the rest, and I'll come back to you once I've done that. So there we go, I'm satisfied that the wheels are gauged on here. Gauging can be quite a fiddly process. If the wheels are too tight to fit the gauge inside, uh, they can be manipulated around on the axle. What I would suggest is just push the wheels out all the way and then shove the gauge in and squeeze them in, making sure that they're sort of centered on the axle. And that should do it. Okay, so the next thing is weight. And uh, a lot of the rolling stock, particularly cheaper stuff or you know from certain manufacturers, does come out the factory a little bit lightweight. And of course, with pieces of rolling stock that do have multiple axles like this, that means that the weight on each axle is a little bit low. Now, of course, on the bumpy nature of points, that can cause the wheels to jump off the track, and that is a bit of an issue. And also, of course, if it's a long train with lots of light rolling stock, that can cause bits of rolling stock to get dragged off the track just because of the weight that is going through them. So a little bit of extra weight on the actual model itself can be a massive help. Now, it's often difficult to find good weights to use in models, but I have found a good solution. So what I use, I'm going to try and haul this in because believe it or not this weighs a ton. I use these. Now credit here goes to David Howarth because uh, he first introduced these to me. He made a video that showed these and uh, I thought I would try some and sure enough yes they are very good. So these are, let's see, they are wheel balancing weights. Uh, basically they're designed for cars and bikes and things uh, in order to balance the wheels to make sure they're perfectly balanced. And uh, you can buy these on eBay, uh, just put in uh, wheel balancing weights I think and you can buy packs of I think a hundred of these strips. It cost me about 20 quid and I got four or five of these bags and this was a couple of years ago and as you can see I've still got new bags so let me show you some of these then I'll open up this bag whoa they have just shot absolutely everywhere so I'm just going to put some of these to one side <laughs> so the good thing about these is that they're sticky so they have their own self-adhesive onto them and they're very heavy as well now as you can see one strip like this weighs 60 grams I believe uh, so it's 10 20 30 40 
50, 60, yeah. So the smaller ones are five grams and the larger ones are 10 grams. Uh, now I prefer these to using lead weights. I used to buy lead balls and put those in the rolling stock, but to be honest, I don't like using lead. Obviously it's poisonous, but that's not a massive issue as long as you don't put it in your mouth or touch it. But the problem is the way I think of it, you know, if something happens to me and all of my rolling stock and that gets sold, it's possible that uh, a kid, you know, could get in touch with it or whatever. And if a kid puts it in their mouth or licks their fingers or whatnot, having handled lead balls, you've got a nasty case of lead poisoning on your hands. So I just thought, you know what, it's better not to use the lead. And recently I went through my rolling stock and took away all of the lead in my different models. And I've been replacing it with these. So I'll show you what I do. So let's have a quick look at this coach then. So there's a little bit of space on the underside here. And the good thing is that these are quite low relief, so you can fit them on the underside. Now, center of gravity is quite important with these coaches um, or any piece of rolling stock. So for example, you're not gonna want to put weights, for example, on the underside of this roof. Uh, that's a good idea, there's lots of space inside there, but that would make the coach very top heavy, and the idea here is we're trying to improve stability. So basically you want to put them as low as you possibly, possibly can. So let's have a quick look. So I'm wondering whether we can put some five gram weights on the actual bogies themselves, sort of long ways in there, and then I think we could perhaps fit maybe one or two 10 gram weights on the uh, in the center here. You want to try and make sure that it is center and not sort of heavy on the left or the right. You want to try and keep it nice and even if possible. So let's have a look. So all you do is you get these strips of uh, 60 gram weights and you cut yourself a few off. You can just use scissors, I find. So let's take a, a 10 gram one there. Oops, try not to let them fall onto the uh, coach. Uh, we want a couple of fives. In fact, we'll cut off quite a few. So uh, don't mind me, I'm just uh, taking a few of these off. What shall we say? We'll say three of each, shall we? Three. All right, so let's see if this is gonna fit. Now, obviously, some of the more, well, people that like to model more realistically aren't really going to want to have visible weights inside here uh, on the bottom, because uh, obviously some people like to have realistic underframes. If you're one of those people, it is more difficult, but it still can be done. It would probably just involve taking the coach apart and uh, hiding some weights inside. Obviously, the center of gravity is gonna be a bit higher, but uh, if realism is your thing, then uh, I suppose that's one thing you would want to do. Okay, and the best thing about these self-adhesive weights, by the way, is that you can stick them to anything. They don't even have to be a flat surface. I think because they're designed for automobiles and things, they, they're designed to take an awful lot of force, and I've found that I've stuck them on some ridiculous places, and they haven't dropped off. So I think that's going to look good. I don't think that's going to be catching the track. If it is, I'll have to take them off. Uh, so I might put those on there, and then we could probably fit a couple of the 10 gram jobs there. So what's that? We're gonna be adding 30 grams of weight to this coach if I do it this way. So let's try this. Um, they are very, very adhesive, as I say. So if you put them on and you don't like them, uh, be prepared to have a fight to get them back off again. So peel the back off, dead easy. Don't let it touch your fingers because that will affect the stickiness of it. And uh, bung them in like this. So that's a five gram on there. And uh, this ought to make a good dis uh, difference. This ought to really stabilize them. Uh, but of course, if it does touch point work and track because they're hanging down too low, uh, then that's an issue. The other thing you can do is you can stack them up. I'm not gonna do that in this case, but you could potentially stack up the weights like this on top of each other if you want to add more. Um, but again, it's probably best if you do that where they're not visible because uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's gonna be noticeable if you do that, isn't it? So there's one. And as I say, we are going to be ruining the uh, the realism of the underside of this coach. Um, but for my layout in particular, where the track is so low down, oops, I put that in the wrong place. Uh, it's not going to be a problem because you're never going to you're never going to be able to see it. So as you can see, I've not got them lying flat just to demonstrate how good these weights are. As you can see, yep, as you can see, nothing's coming off the bottom. <laughs> they all still stuck on. Let's make sure. Yeah, they seem to be reasonably stable. And if I take this out, you can probably see that there's, they're not really that noticeable unless you're sort of looking at them from underneath like that. So as you say, uh, I think these are gonna be the, uh, the ones that might bother people the most. So if that's a bit too messy for you, then uh, as I say, you probably wanna take the thing apart and uh, find a better place to hide those. But now we've got uh, quite a bit more heaviness on this coach. And so I think that will be better on points. We'll try that in a second. But obviously certain rolling stock is gonna be more of a challenge, uh, you know, in order to hide things. So I've got a few other bits of rolling stock here. So a little wagon like this, for example, sometimes wagons of this size are a little bit light. 
So there are a few cheats. Obviously, the most easy, uh, the easiest cheat, I would say, is just to add a load. Uh, if you use real stone or real ballast or something like that, uh, then that will increase the weight quite a bit. Again, you can dismantle the wagon if you want and try and find a place to put the weight inside. Although, as you can see, there is a nice handy flat surface there. So a 10 gram weight would fit in quite perfectly there. And again, you wouldn't really be able to see that too badly. Um, so that's that. I mean, that's something you can do with a coach like that. Um, box vans or something like that. Normally box vans are hollow and as you can see this one is so you could put some weights inside there and hold it. The same is true for the Hornby box vans. If you take a look inside here there are places you will find on most pieces of rolling stock there should be places where you can hide weights and things. Obviously it doesn't always work out as, as neatly and tidily as that. For example these Oxford Rail ICI hopper wagons beautiful models but they are very very light and of course there's a large number of axles on these so the, the actual weight per axle is very very low. Now obviously the underframe detail is massively beautiful on this so it's it would be soul destroying to stick ugly hideous weights onto the underside like that. So the answer is I don't really know what you would do for something like this. If it's causing problems, yeah, I don't really know. Um, again, I suppose adding a load would be the most realistic thing to do. Um, but yeah, the idea is get creative, see if you can find places to stash weights away where they won't be seen and see if you can get away with it on the realism front. Okay, so let's get this coach down onto the track then and we'll see if it behaves any better on the points. I hope it does after all that. Okay, so I've got my newly cleaned, uh, weight-added, regaged coach, and I'm going to try it on my nasty point. So let's see how this goes. Hey, there we go. Seemed to do that quite nice. There we go. Let's do it a few times just to be sure. So that seems to work a lot better. So whether it's the weight or the clean wheels or the regauge, I don't know. It's probably a combination of them all. Uh, but as you can see, that is fixed now. And I'll probably have to do this with some of the others that are causing problems. But there we go. I mean, that is probably the key to it, the back-to-back -back gauge. I must say, though, that using this does seem to space at least the Hornby wheels a little bit too far. I've noticed that if I gauge them with this and then try them, they do sometimes still derail. So what I do is I gauge them with this and then I take the gauge out and I push the wheels closer together very slightly, uh, very, very slightly, just a, a tiny tad, and that seems to fix it. But I think that depends on the type of wheel you use and how thick the uh, flanges are. But yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. That seems to be working very, very well. So if you have any suggestions of your own on uh, how these things can be improved even further, do let me know and I will give that a try. But at least for this coach, that seems to be working a lot better on the points. Uh, I'll have to try it on some other points and see if that uh, is the case all the, all the way around. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed that, folks. Do let me know in the comments if that was any help at all. And if there's anything else uh, you would like me to shed my wisdom on, or lack of wisdom probably, because, uh, you know, I'm no expert on these things. But uh, I've got a point of view on most things, so if there's if there's anything you'd like to uh, have a video on, basically, uh, do let me know, and I'll try and do that. But for now, thank you very much for watching, folks. I'm just enjoying the fact that this teak isn't derailing. It's bugged me for years, this little blighter. Ah, that's much better. All right, well, I'll see you soon then, folks. Take care.